Cabinet Minister and one of Singapore's first generation leaders, Othman Wok, has died. Mr. Othman, who stepped down from politics in 1980, was 92 years old. He died at about 12.30 p.m. today at Singapore General Hospital. The state flag on all government buildings have been flown at half-mast and will do so until the memorial service is completed. The service, organized by OnePeople.sg, will be held on 19th of April. And we now turn to our reporter, Liana Othman, who is at Kew Avenue, where tributes are pouring in for the late minister. Now, um, Liana, I believe that you have been um, at the late Mr. Othman's res residence all day. Perhaps you can just tell us um, who are some of the people who have visited um, the residence to pay their last respects. Oh, that's right, Oteli. Earlier today, we've got President Dr. Tony Tan, who was here, Defence Minister Ng Eng Heng, uh, Deputy, both Deputy Prime Ministers, uh, Taman Shamugaratnam and uh, Teo Chi Hien, were also here. And now we're just waiting for the arrival of Prime Minister Lee Sien Long. That could happen any time. Um, but also earlier, I spoke to uh, the Minister in Charge of Muslim Affairs and the Minister for Communications and Information, Dr. Yaakob Ibrahim. Uh, he was emotional when he was describing uh, the late Mr. Othman Wok. He said that uh, the late Mr. Othman was an important figure and someone who laid the foundation for a modern and progressive Malay Muslim community. He was also an icon of multiculturalism and fought for not only the Malays but for all Singaporeans during the country's uh, turbulent times. Here's what he, as well as DPM Taman, had to say. I think he was one who saw through some of the extremist forces that were at play at that yeah. time to realise that a better future lies for Singapore through a society where we respect one another and we live in a society where we try to develop the common good. He fought for what he believed was right, not only for the Malays in Singapore but also for the whole of Singapore. Singapore would, um, without any doubt, be a very different country if Inche Othman Wok was not part of Mr. Lee Kuan Yew's team. A very different country. His guts, the courage he gave the Malay community and the confidence he gave all Singaporeans, yeah. confidence in multiracialism, that we could make it work. That's what we are in debt to him for. All right, that's uh, Prime Minister Lee Sien Long entering the late Mr. Othman Wok's residence. Um, Liana, um, in the meantime, do you have any details on um, tomorrow's funeral plans? Yes, Oteli. Well, uh, the late Mr. Othman Wok's uh, body will actually move from uh, his residence over here at Kew Avenue uh, to the Sultan Mosque at, at about 12.15 uh, p.m. Uh, he will then be buried at Trachukang Muslim Cemetery uh, tomorrow, that's Tuesday. Um, the government will accord him the honour of being born the ceremonial gun carriage for his final journey from Sultan Mosque to, to the Pusara Abadi at Trachukang. Um, there will also be a memorial service organised on Wednesday. Back to you, Oteli. All right. Uh, very many thanks, Liana. And uh, that was Liana Othman speaking to us from the residence of the late Mr. Othman at Q Avenue. Now, we've just heard from Liana about tomorrow's funeral, and here are the details in full. A state-assisted funeral will be held for the late Mr. Othman walk tomorrow. At 12.15 p.m., a private hearse carrying the casket will make its way from Mr. Othman's home to the Sultan Mosque at North Bridge Road for the funeral prayer. The state flag will then be draped over the casket. Now that's the highest state honour that can be given to someone who has died. At 2 p.m., the gun carriage will carry the casket along River Valley Road before going through the heartlands of Alexandra Road, Commonwealth Avenue West and Clemente Avenue 6. It will then make its way to the burial site at Chua Chu Kang Muslim. Muslim Cemetery via the Pan Island Expressway and Jalan Baha. Prime Minister Lee Sen Lung and his colleagues in the cabinet have expressed their deepest condolences to the family of the late Mr. Othman Wok. 
In a statement, the Prime Minister's office referred to Mr. Othman as a founding father of Singapore. During the critical period when Singapore was in Malaysia and then separated to become an independent republic, he was a key member in late founding Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew's cabinet, who supported Mr. Lee in a fight for a multiracial and multi-religious Singapore. Now, PAP's organizing secretary, Chan Chun Singh, has also expressed condolences, saying that Mr. Othman was one of the earliest proponents of multiracialism in Singapore. The PAP called for the preservation of his ideals for a multiracial, multicultural nation and rededication to building on the legacy of the Republic's pioneers. Meanwhile, the Social and Family Development Ministry said over his 15 years of service, Mr. Othman, who was the first Minister for Social Affairs, worked to advance the quality of social welfare service. Social and Family Development Minister Tan Chuan Jin said that Mr. Othman was an advocate of improving training and research in the field. He said Mr. Othman also urged organizations to join in efforts to do more for the care of the elderly. Mr. Tan said Mr. Othman's tireless efforts in shaping the social sector set a solid foundation for his ministry to build upon. Separately, the Islamic Religious Council of Singapore said Mr. Othman laid the foundation for the administration of Muslim affairs in Singapore. It said his greatest legacy was the part he played in developing the administration of Muslim Law Act that enabled the building of institutions to serve the community. Self-help group Yayasan Mendaki said that Mr. Othman played a pivotal role in keeping unity at the juncture when the Malay community found itself a minority group after separation from Malaysia in 1965. Now, former Cabinet Minister Ong Pang Boon, who, with Mr. Othman, was among the PAP's old guard of politicians, said that Mr. Othman contributed significantly to the PAP's multiracial platform. Mr. Ong said he and Mr. Othman worked closely in the early years of the PAP. He remembered Mr. Othman to be a man of integrity, with absolute loyalty to the PAP and then Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew. Now, as you've heard, the late pioneer leader, Mr. Othman, was a champion of multiracialism. And we remember the man whose courage and convictions, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew had said, made a difference to Singapore at a critical time in its history. He was a journalist, a union leader, a politician, and an ambassador. Othman Wok, Singapore's first social affairs minister, was all these and more. Born in 1924, Othman Wok was the son of a Malay school principal. Despite objections from his grandfather, his progressive father sent the young Othman to Radhanma School and Raffles Institution, both English medium schools. His career as a journalist was perhaps accidental. He had joined the Utusan Malayu, a Malay language newspaper, as a clerk, but he was soon talent spotted and offered the job of a cub reporter by its editor and managing director, Mr. Yusuf Ishak, the man who was to become Singapore's first president. While Mr. Othman was working for Utusan Malayu, he became involved in union activities. And it was as secretary of the Singapore Printing Employees Union that he first met Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, the union's legal advisor. Persuaded to enter politics, he joined the People's Action Party a few days after it was formed in 1954. But Mr. Othman, who won his first electoral battle in 1963, was to learn that achieving racial harmony was easier said than done. Following merger with Malaysia, racial tensions between the Malay and Chinese communities, stoked by fiery speeches by extremist Malay leaders from Kuala Lumpur, came to a head during the 1964 procession to celebrate Prophet Muhammad's birthday. I remember your staunch support and loyalty during those troubled days when we were in Malaysia, and the tensions were most severe immediately before and following the bloody riots in July 1964. At that time, the greatest pressures were mounted by Amno Malay extremists who denounced you and Malay PAP leaders, especially you, as infidels, kafirs, and traitors, khianat, not to Singapore, but to the Malay race. I heard it, the crowd said it, bunches of them, they were designed to intimidate him and the other Malay leaders in PAP.
because of the courage and the leadership you showed, not one AAP Malay leader wavered. And that made a difference to Singapore. Mr. Othman's loyalty to Singapore was tested again in 1965. They were faced with the critical decision to support or oppose separation from Malaysia. PM called me. He said, Osman, come with me to the next room. There was another room. And he said to me, he said, would you sign this uh, separation agreement? I said, I would. Mr. Osman was to serve for 17 years, 14 of them as Minister for Social Affairs. Promoting racial harmony was a key responsibility. Another was the promotion of sports among the masses and encouraging athletes to represent Singapore. And it was also Mr. Osman who got the national stadium built. When you think back of those times, uh, those were very... Uh... Uh, economically hard times and yet uh, he could push this through uh, <laughs> parliament and get it passed so I think more importantly it was uh, how he not how he fired us up but how he fired up the cabinet to get the approval for, for all the plans that he had as minister overseeing the Malay Muslim community, Mr. Osman's legacy includes the setting up of the Mosque Building Fund and the Islamic Religious Council or MUIS, which sees to the welfare of Muslims here. After retiring from active politics in 1980, Mr. Osman served as Singapore's ambassador to Indonesia and also on the Singapore Tourism Board and Sentosa Development Corporation. The born storyteller also published his collections of horror stories, as well as his autobiography, Never in My Wildest Dreams. But even in retirement, Mr. Othman continued to serve well into his 80s, giving talks on national education to civil servants. Always be loyal to your country. And you're a Singaporean, you will always be a Singaporean. A recap of our top story. The late pioneer leader Osman Wok has died aged 92. Now, Mr. Lee has written a letter addressed to his widow, Lina Abdullah. He also described the Mr. Mr. Osman as one who was steadfast in believing in a multiracial Singapore. In his condolence letter, Mr. Lee said Mr. Osman Wok was one of Singapore's founding fathers and he was passionate in championing a multiracial and multireligious Singapore. He said Mr. Osman was also steadfast and unwavering in his beliefs, which helped to make Singapore what it is today. Mr. Lee noted his contributions in serving the Malay community. And his role in setting up the system of registration for Sheikh Hajis and pilgrim brokers in Singapore. Besides this, Mr. Othman also played a part in developing an active and vibrant sports scene in Singapore. Mr. Lee said Mr. Othman's courage and passion helped set Singapore on a path of peace and progress, and that his passing is a deep loss to the nation. <laughs>